My name is Asif Khan and I'm a Cloud Solution Architect at Microsoft. In today's session, we will be covering Azure Arc. Azure Arc is a Microsoft Azure service, which is basically built for hybrid use cases. Now, the service uh, Azure Arc has a wide range of capabilities, but in today's session, we will be just focusing on the Azure Arc-based Kubernetes. Now, Azure Arc-based Kubernetes is, uh, is, is a capability where you can use your existing Kubernetes cluster running any place which can be on-prem, in a data center, in other clouds like uh, AWS, Google, or Alibaba. And you can basically use uh, Azure Arc to enable and, and basically connect that particular cluster into the Azure portal, just like a native service experience. Now, the Azure Arc service as a whole is pretty broad because it covers wide range of different capabilities like the Azure Arc based VMs, Azure Arc based data services, which has hyperscale. And there are some services in preview as well. So one part of the story is where you have these VMs or Kubernetes or data services running in your other clouds or on-prem or domain data centers, and you want to bring it to Azure. The other capability can be that uh, let's say you have Azure services like Azure Web App, Logic Apps, and, and services of those like. And if you want to basically run those services natively in your own infrastructure, which can be on-prem data centers, or let's say AWS, Google, or other clouds. Now, for that, the Azure Arc-based uh, so web apps, and Azure Arc-based Logic App services, and, and, and a couple of other services are also coming up, but they are still in preview at this stage. So with respect to the GA, we have Azure Arc-based VMs, Azure Arc-based Kubernetes, and Azure Arc-based data services. What we will be covering today is, as I said, will be Azure Arc-based Kubernetes cluster. Now, in a nutshell, uh, if you look at, um, Azure Arc, firstly, what we said that we would be needing a Kubernetes infrastructure. So if you want to build a Kubernetes infrastructure of a bare metal or let's say any of the managed Kubernetes service, which is through the other cloud provider like EKS or GKS, uh, there are a couple of things, which is obviously you might have to have one master node, one worker node, and that that's something that's the bare minimum which might be required for those uh, infrastructure. But let's say if I'm doing a dev or a non-prod or a pre-prod environments, I would not need that intense environment. And if I can run a particular Kubernetes cluster locally on my laptop or let's say in, in a very lightweight, sleek infrastructure, that would be something my desire. So that's where I came across Canonical uh, Micro KHS. Canonical is the same organization which manages Ubuntu. Uh, they have come up with a full-fledged uh, Kubernetes solution, which obviously has all the nut bells and vessels which are required, which you basically see in a regular Kubernetes infrastructure, but it is very sleek and very lean. Now, I'll just quickly show you the uh, when micro KHS uh, portal where you can basically see uh, w what the canonical team has come up with. And if you look at it, it's a, it's a pretty lean Kubernetes uh, infrastructure, KHS infrastructure. As you can see, it supports both Windows, Linux, and Mac. So you can basically take the installer and, and run it on any of those places. Uh, with the recent release, they are also making it highly available. So now, as far as their commitment is concerned, they say that it is production ready and you can basically utilize it for production workloads as well. Uh, but yeah, in my my understanding, I would recommend that yeah, if you're doing anything non-prod, definitely you can go for this. And this is very quick. Uh, as far as their commitment, it's like 60 seconds under which you can basically set up a Kubernetes infrastructure in your environment. And uh, yeah, but I haven't checked with the clock. Now, what we will do is today, I'll basically install a micro KHS infrastructure on a Ubuntu server running on a Hyper-V. So let me quickly show you that. Uh, so if I, sh yeah, so that's the server which I have. And just to prove no smoking mirrors. So this is my Hyper-V infrastructure. I am just uh, have a couple of VMs. So one of the VMs is the Ubuntu VM. And this VM is basically uh, where I've just installed the vanilla Ubuntu and, and I'm, I'll be installing my micro KHS uh, on top of this. So yeah, I'll just quickly uh, minimize that. And what we will do is I'll just run a couple of scripts. And as you can see, uh, the if you look at the uh, micro KTS portal, it gives you a straightforward step of how you can install if you just select the relevant infrastructure, uh, relevant operating system. There are very straightforward step. In six steps, you are all done. Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll I've just taken a note of those uh, steps and. Uh, and some of the steps which were basically required for setting up the uh, Kubernetes cluster, micro cluster for uh, 
Azure Arc. Uh, I will basically run those as well to get this up and running. So what I'll do now is I'll just uh, run this command and as you can see i've just selected specific version you if you run the default which is uh, sudo snap install micro creators it will just take the the most stable one which is 1.6 as per today on the 9th of september but yeah i have seen like that has some challenges with azure arc so i would recommend to use 1.21 if you are trying to test it out somewhere in the same time as i'm building this session so uh, for now i'll just run this command and uh, so I'm already a root user. Firstly, you need to be at the root, and then, yeah, I've just run the command. So normally, uh, as as the as the team micro creators team commits, it's a it should be done in less than 60 seconds. But yeah, I've seen it take some time, a little bit more. So what what I'll do is I'll let it install. All right. So as you can see, the installation is completed. Um, it didn't took a long time. Um, yeah, it was pretty quick. So yeah, we can see the green tick over here. Can Canonical is installed. So the next best way to identify whether everything is up and running. Um, so basically, micro has, has provided a, a command which you can use to just test if everything is uh, is perfectly set up. So I'll just run the command. And yeah, it doesn't take too long should be quick yeah so it's basically saying that micro is running now uh, one of the other thing is we should enable dns uh, uh, that's basically uh, one of the thing which is recommended for setting up the cluster for aks uh, sorry uh, setting up the cluster for azure arc uh, enablement uh, yeah so that's the next step which we should do so i'll just enable the micro enable dns command so yeah that again shouldn't take too long uh, because uh, it just enabled the dns and, and and the routing stuff so once that is done the next step is uh, basically what we will do is we will take the configuration file and uh, we will update it with the cluster details so let's quickly uh, yeah let's quickly do that so if i just copy that yeah, and it's just uh, restarting the cube kubelets so that uh, DNS details gets updated everywhere in the cluster. So in the meanwhile, uh, I'll just show you some of the other things which we will do after we have set up the cluster. So it's more about um, setting up the connecting the cluster with Azure Arc. So once the cluster is set up, which is the, the last step is about just enabling the DNS. Uh, there are a couple of things which needs to be done on the Azure side. So firstly, we need to uh, register the providers. Now, what this provider concept means is when you when you run, when you you run set up a subscription, there are by default, a lot of providers which get automatically enabled, things like your virtual machines, things like your storage and, and providers for uh, storage, virtual machines and networks and stuff like that. So, uh, with respect to this uh, Azure Arc Kubernetes, we have to enable a couple of specific uh, providers. So one is Microsoft.Kubernetes and another one is Microsoft.Kubernetes configuration. So what you do is, this is the exact command uh, once you run it. So firstly, you'll have to do a AZ login. So you need to log in into your Azure subscription using this CLI. Once you have logged in, you just run the command that will enable. Now, once you have enabled that, uh, basically you can check that as well. So that's good. Yeah, the uh, DNS has been enabled. We'll just copy the uh, configuration file. So this is the same config location which you normally would have seen if you use Kubernetes uh, .q file where you have the config files. Uh, MicroCreate has has a config file with the name MicroCreate as. So so we'll just take the take the command and that would basically update our config file. So that's it. Our config is updated. Our Kubernetes cluster is all up and running. So if I come over here and if I say micro ks kubectl get pods minus a from all the namespace. And that's where I can see I have four different pods which are running. So it all looks good. So I'll clear that. So as I was talking about the registration of uh, the providers, so you can run these commands. In my case, I've already run it. So let me just quickly show you where you can find these uh, providers registered. So if you come into the portal, as you can see in the portal, uh, I've just gone through some stuff. I'll show, just quickly show you. So you go into the subscription, select your subscription, 
once you have selected your subscription go to the resource providers if you select the resource providers as i said there are a lot of different providers which are by default enabled when your subscription comes in so things like your web network storage now if you look at it there are a couple of providers which are not registered as well but in my case since i have already uh, enabled the kubernetes provider i should already see it over here so if i come over here i can see microsoft.kubernetes configuration microsoft.kubernetes both of the providers are already registered so coming back to our cli uh, so we have i've already registered that the other thing is about installing the extension these extension needs to be installed on the same machine from where you are accessing the cluster because this will help in connecting your cluster with the particular uh, azure kubernetes uh, sorry azure arc based kubernetes uh, service now if i run this command it's already set up so it won't it will say already exist if i run this but in your case you can install it and it will uh, basically install the particular uh, connected kts uh, extension as well as the kts configuration extension once we have done these steps that's it the next step is all about uh, now just porting this particular cluster into uh, into azure using the az connect kts command now this command is uh, it's just a regular az cli command as you can see there is a name this will be the name of our cluster this is the resource group and then we basically provide the configuration file so as you remember we did create a copy of our uh, our uh, config file which we did above that's the same config file which we will be providing and then also we will provide a context out inside that config file now what that context is uh, if you open the config file using any of these commands you can see that um, there's a context property as well so if i run this command so you can see i have a context and that's the that that's the context name so that's the same context name which we provide over here so it's a micro kts context and that's the tag so this tag is basically the tag which will be visible with the service when the service is provisioned in, in the azure so so all uh, all good from here i think the only thing which we need to do is to run this command so what i'll do is i'll quickly run the command uh, okay. I messed it. No, that's fine. So I'll just copy this. All right. So, so once I run this command, obviously it takes a while because it installs a lot of agents and a lot of stuff in the background, uh, which I'll I'll basically show you what all things happen in the background. Uh, but yeah, it normally takes some time to set it up and the service gets enabled and visible in the Azure portal. So for now, I'll just run the command and then we will just quickly walk, talk through what are the other things which happen in the background. So coming back to our whiteboard, as you can see over here, <clears throat> this is in a nutshell uh, the entire experience. So on the left side, as you can see, we have Microsoft Azure, uh, all the different Azure capabilities. And then in the middle, this is our customer location. So customer location is where we have our agents installed because that's where from where the agent accesses the cluster. And then at the same time, it also communicates back to the Azure Kubernetes, Azure Arc Kubernetes service endpoints so that it gets all the policy detail, monitoring detail and all that stuff. It is a bi-directional agent. So it takes the data from uh, configuration and everything from here, put it into the cluster, takes the cluster details like uh, metadata configuration, things like uh, monitoring capability, telemetries, and then put it into the Azure ecosystem. So it works both direction. So uh, yeah, at the end of the day, this is all on the agent model. Uh, literally, I haven't read any any specific, uh, specific documentation, but based on what I've heard, uh, at the end of the day, these agents use service bus relays because they have that outbound HTTPS, um, only HTTPS outbound requirement for for three port and and that's how they communicate back so you don't need to poke any holes in your uh, security infrastructure or anything to get this entire uh, capability working in your environment now once the setup is will complete like once the command which we ran completes uh, what we will see is we will see a couple of different things and those things are these are this common um, 
like pods which will get deployed inside your containers which will get deployed inside your kubernetes cluster so we have a config agent config uh, controller manager matrix agent now config agent uh, as as the details already states that it, it's more about um, the, the the like it watches the connected cluster and all the config sync happens in both the directions controller manager is like the entire orchestrator which orchestrates everything matrix agent is or it's, it basically takes the matrix for for the arc agents and then put it into the azure so that uh, if they are all happy and performing at the optimal level and all that stuff uh, metadata information so it gets the metadata information of the cluster all the things like version number of nodes which are running and then all that stuff and then uh, it also has a cluster identity operator which is like the um, managed service identity which is basically you know, the way how this agent talks to the Azure ecosystem and all that. And then we have the Flux log agent. Flux is very aligned to, uh, like when we go to the next stage, which is the GitOps, uh, then the Flux is used for connecting the Git repo with your cluster uh, deployment. But in this case, the Flux log, log agent just collect the logs from the Flux operators and deploy it as a part of your yeah, configuration and all that stuff. So we'll leave the command running at this stage. Uh, it's not yet completed. But yeah, uh, we'll come. Uh, we'll basically, once it completes, uh, we can continue from there. So now, as I can see, the command has already completed. So let's switch to our Ubuntu machine. All right, pretty good. So as you can see on the screen, uh, we have the execution done, and it comes up with the response uh, JSON details. So it. The, so this is basically the uh, public certificate with which the agent would be able to talk to the Kubernetes cluster, um, like the uh, Kubernetes instance, which is there in Azure, the Azure Arc Kubernetes instance. It also gives some details. So that's the name of our Kubernetes uh, Arc cluster name. That's the resource group where we have deployed all the creation details and whatnot. And then, uh, that's the tagging which we use. So that's anyways. Uh, and it also shows that the status is connecting. So now let's switch to the Azure portal and see what's the status over there. So if I look at the Azure portal, you can see that Arc Micro KTS cluster is now already there. The status is showing connecting. Now if I refresh this, so now you can see the status has changed to connected. And that's what we needed now if you look at the portal side of things and in the menu blade you can see there are a couple of different things things like monitoring things like insights and stuff uh, but the most interesting one is this git ops now this git ops is something which we will be covering in our next session not in this one but uh, just to give you some overview the git ops is more about if you want to let's say have an application lifecycle management for your containers or solutions running on this cluster so that's where the git ops comes into the picture so on a nutshell the way how it works is we have our all the configuration for the application uh, versioning and, and container version and all that stuff in a, let's say Helm or a YAML file. And then we provide that uh, configuration file to this GitOp instance in, in our particular Kubernetes Arc cluster. And then there is a Flux agent which gets deployed in the cluster side when we have a Git ops uh, setup done. So if I click on this, uh, you would be able to see that I can add a configuration. Uh, there's a wizard. We will basically run it through a command line. But once I do set up this and, and add it, it will basically go and install a Flux agent, uh, which would basically do the uh, syncing of the application lifecycle management or keeping the application up to date with the latest versions of uh, the patch and whatnot. Now, the other thing is all about the policies and stuff. So you can have uh, you can set up policies and then automatically that will be deployed into the Azure uh, Arc server. Uh, these are not Kubernetes policy. These are all VM based policies. So I think uh, that that's mostly which would be uh, obviously consideration. Apart from that, if we look at the overview, uh, it all looks good. It still shows connected. Now, you can see a couple of other things. You can see the Kubernetes version, which is running over there. Uh, this is the agent details and whatnot. Okay, so now the interesting bit is let's see if we can see the inside, but we will not be able to see because it will ask to connect to a log analytics workspace. Um, at this stage, because it's newly set up, I don't think so. Uh, we, we haven't set up any log analytics workspace. So what I'll do is I'll quickly connect it to one of my log analytics workspace I have set up for uh, for this 
particular instance. I've already created the log analytics uh, instance. And if I go and select this, that's a micro K test log analytics LA. And if I just click configure, it will start the configuration, which is more about uh, the agent which uh, we were seeing earlier uh, on the whiteboard. So let me just switch to that. So the agents which we were seeing over here, the uh, the matrix agent and the, the flux log agents, all those data would be now streaming through into the log analytics workspace. Uh, so what that means is uh, if we come back to our browser so as you can see the status is onboarding in progress eventually uh, in due course of time it will uh, set up the entire log analytics workspace and all the telemetries will start to come in now let's go to our uh, cluster and let's see a couple of things over there so if i if i run um, to get the my pod details so let me first create an alias okay because the command becomes pretty lengthy with micro kts micro kts cube ctl and okay i spell something wrong micro k it is cube ctl oh, what's wrong uh, a l i a s k equal to micro m i c r o k eight s cube ctl it's not in happy <laughs> anyways so i'll just use the command directly uh, okay get pods minus a so it will show some pods which got installed during the configuration process um, and obviously it will also list the pods i was showing you um, in the in the in the docker side uh, about the configuration configuration agent the controller manager and stuff like that uh, it doesn't take that long uh, hopefully it should come quickly in the meanwhile, what we can do is if we go back to our browser, and if I if I refresh this, so if I, let's say if I say locks, and if I come back into this, okay, so it oh, yeah, it takes a while before the setup. Uh, gets completed so it says five minutes okay something interesting is happening on the server side because it's running on a hyper-v on my machine it's uh, pretty i think so choked because i'm also recording at the same time so i'll just clean it up and say uh, micro kts get uh, pods minus a if this doesn't work then maybe i'll open another terminal because yeah something yeah perfect so now as you can see we have a couple of uh, namespaces which got created azure arc is one of the namespace uh, and that's that's the namespace where all our different uh, components are sitting so if i uh, if i get into this uh, not the search no let me select that yep so if i come over here and if i say uh, I'm just trying to highlight some of the things uh, which are interesting in this part. Okay, so if I, uh, yeah, so as I said, like if you look at the this particular uh, uh, number, the different parts which got created, let me highlight some of the things. So as you can see, we have this flux logs, which is, which is, really uh, the one which we saw in the docos as well so we have the flux flux log we have uh, over here we have this flux logs we have the matrix agents we have uh, we have the cluster metadata we have the controller manager uh, of, and we have the cluster identity which is for msi we have the extension manager which is all about managing the extension and whatnot cube add proxy this is for the proxy management and config agent so config agent as we discussed earlier was more about uh, setting managing the configuration and all that details so i'll just uh, quickly switch to our whiteboard so these are the different agents which i was referring to the config agent controller manager metrics agent cluster metadata resource sync uh 
cluster identity operator and flux logs so these are the same uh, pods and, and components and, and like which are get agents which got deployed into our kubernetes cluster and at this stage uh, obviously it, it's pretty connected now what i'll do is maybe i'll quickly run a simple command which is uh, micro k as uh, uh, micro k as run okay something I, uh, maybe i clicked something so i'll just i'll just uh, what i'm trying to do is i'm just trying to run uh, uh nginx pod nginx run nginx and then i'll say image okay before i do that let me uh let me see if the logs are uh, the log analytics workspace is set up or not because uh, that's what i want to show uh, that the log analytics workspace uh, without this new agent and uh, without this new pod and with the new pod setup so i think we should get some telemetries now okay it still says it needs some time that's okay uh, let me see the log preview okay everything is still under configuration so that that's all good so what i'll do is i'll not uh, execute this command at this stage because uh, what I want to show you is firstly, uh, once the log index workspace is set up, we will be able to monitor all these different agents which are installed directly in the portal itself without coming to this uh, uh, particular uh, VM, uh, Ubuntu VM, and we can just uh, it's monitored remotely. And then if we add any new thing, any new pod or any new service or any new component, that will be also reflect, reflected back into our uh, Azure portal. So once we have our log analytics agent set up, uh, we'll come back over here. All right, so our log agent service has all been set up and uh, so all the telemetries from this particular uh, cluster is all getting uh, telemetry are being published to the Azure Arc uh, and, and the Log Analytics workspace. So let me switch to our uh, Azure portal. All right, so as you can see, this is our same Azure Arc, uh, the, the cluster and then the Log Analytics workspace, which I've enabled. So it has got a couple of Kubernetes uh, tables which have come in, which are part of the telemetries that build those tables. Um, and if we look at some of the queries, so if I want to see the container logs, I can basically run the command. Yep, so once I run the command, it basically gets uh, all the details of whatever logs have been streamed in. Uh, and it gives the container ID and then also it gives a log entry in that container ID. So all the details, this is something similar to if you write kubectl um, logs, then yeah, it would give almost the similar things. And if you want to see the container services, uh, yeah, that that's basically will show our flux and on all the other services which are being running in inside our Kubernetes cluster. So if you look at services, we have flux log agent, kube ads, kube DNS, uh, yeah, so it, it it has pretty much all those different services which are running in the background. Now, if we flip and get into the insights, this is where we get some interesting uh, graphical view uh, and we don't need to write any log, uh, any queries, custom queries or whatnot. So as you can see, we have some high level details, cluster reports, nodes, container level con uh, controllers and containers. Um, at this stage, we have just connected. So as you can see, this is only one um, spot which has come in which is about the node memory node cpu node counts uh, obviously we have one node and active pods and all that stuff so it shows there are 15 active running pods but yeah this gets pretty mature as the time passes now if we go into the containers that's where uh, we will see all the containers which are uh, running in inside our cluster and it, it streams pretty well. So as you can see over here, we have OMS agent, Calico nodes, uh, Fluent bit. These are all, I think, so internal. The interesting ones are the ones, uh, yeah, so the cluster, uh, yeah, so cluster connect agent, this is where it connects and the flux agent, this is for the logs, which we saw earlier and Calico was the one which was uh, installed. So if you even click on it on the container, it will give you more details about the container and whatnot. Now, as you can see, we have all the different uh, agents and stuff installed over here. Uh, what I'll do is uh, we'll go back to our uh, uh, our server and uh, Kubernetes cluster, and we will try to uh, basically I will run a nginx kubectl run 
ngim x port let's say give it a specific name let's say uh, arc and then say image image equal to nginx and let's run this hopefully that should create a new pod over here yep so it's created if i run the get pod minus a i should see the new nginx uh, pod running so yeah it is running inside the default namespace um yeah so container creating uh, it should be it should be quick let's say w we'll just wait for the container to complete okay so it's still creating all right so i think it should create uh, yeah uh, it's because i think so the well, vm is pretty exhausted um, that's why it, it it is taking a little a little while but let me cancel this and clear the screen then i say just minus a okay uh, get part so let's say all right i get i hope there is no image issue describe x c don't have her so so ng um hope i'm writing the name night i'm writing the name correctly Uh, the server does not have a resource type uh, nginx oh okay i describe or uh, i'm not writing the command right it's... all right so it says successfully assigned pulling the image successfully started container okay that shows pretty promising response oh yeah now it's running so all all well uh, okay i think the interesting bit is like as see uh, we have created this particular nginx uh, nginx uh, pod over here which is uh, obviously uh, yeah just created i i would say two minutes back so it's not even too long now let's go into our azure portal and let's refresh this and if we refresh this, uh, it would basically bring in all the containers which are there. So I can even say search for ng. And as you can see, I, I have the Nginx come a particular pod being reflected over here. It says the status. So it's, 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 it's a very good experience because everything is extracted out in very real time model. And if I click on the specific pod, it would show all the different, uh, yeah, all the different the uh, components which are running inside the pod if there are uh, yeah it, it, like it gives all the things like your this is your nginx arc pod uh, yeah nginx arc pod and then inside that it also gives you details like your uh, container restart details uptime details and and obviously the node on top of which it is running so yeah it, it gives you very granular details um, that that was a controller yeah and uh, if i look at the node I can see that yeah it also shows that it's my ubuntu node which is where ubuntu where everything is running i can open that as well without even getting to the details so it, it shows all the different uh, things which are running inside the, about the calico nodes and whatnot um, yeah so it's uh, it's a it's a very uh, intuitive experience if you want to push the envelope you can go and have a yeah, you can build your own workbooks and, and you can even uh, consume an AKS uh, predefined gallery workbook. So that can give you like a, a very niche uh, graphical visualization of your entire uh, telemetries coming out because at the end of the day, it's all Kubernetes. So the telemetries uh, are pretty aligned. So yeah, I, I think that that gives you a graphical view. Now look at the experience. So it, it is where it's what about like 
everything is running in a very remote location on my laptop azure doesn't know anything about it but it is streaming in a way that it looks like it's running natively in azure and the, the performance and everything is so impressive that yeah you can look at it it, it gives a very real-time experience for everything so i highly recommend everyone to go and have an experience with azure arc um, azure arc with kubernetes is pretty mature it's already ga uh, what i would recommend is uh, maybe for if you are doing for your uh, testing and, and purposes and doing just uh, getting the hands sturdy, I would say try to use uh, regions which are more US based regions because uh, the, the services are good all over the globe. I, as I say, it's a GA service, but yeah, I think it's more comfortable and reliable uh, using a US region if you are just trying to test it out. Uh, in the next session, we will be covering about the GitOps capability, which is there in this, which makes it like uh, the gem of this entire service. If you enable GitOps, your entire pod deployment and then deployment experience of Kubernetes becomes very easy. So yeah, I think, uh, hope you had a good experience with this uh, with this session. And uh, I would highly recommend to uh, definitely go and, and have a check of uh, experience it by yourself because there's nothing better than getting your hand dirty. So yeah, thanks a lot for your time and uh, hope you have a good day. Thank you.